Hail and hello, everyone. Welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, a Midgard Musings production. Join me, Jesse, your host, as we discuss random heathen-related topics and various other things in an attempt to find where, if any, heathen worldviews can be applied. You can support this podcast by clicking on the Linktree link in the description or show notes. You can also follow me on all of my social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and become a patron on Patreon. Join me every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Central on all major podcast streaming platforms, including Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and many, many more. If you wish to have your voice heard on the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, you can dial in to 615-671-9832. Thank you all once again for listening to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. Enjoy and hail to you all. Party started. Kids are coughing. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. It's really good ambience in the background. We got the crickets, we got the we got the, the, the birds, and then we got children with the whooping cough. Yeah. Yeah. Bron- you know, bronchitis or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like it. So guys, uh, welcome to another Random Heathen Ramblings podcast with me and Patrick Walsh in person for the very first time. He's been on the podcast a number of times before. Uh, but today is his first in person. He's here with me in uh, Tennessee and we're at the Case and Trailhead for the uh, MTH Park moot later on today. So I'm excited to have you here, man. No, damn happy to be here. Yeah. So we're going to be talking about, I mean, who knows what we're going to be talking about, but I think I have a feeling we're going to be talking a little bit about one of your recent um, experiences with seeing Hylum. Yeah, that was uh, quite the experience. Yeah, so so give us a rundown from, I guess, the start of it all to to getting there, to the to the, to the the ritual, to get leaving. I mean, just give us a whole experience rundown while I light this pipe. Absolutely. So, I uh, first saw them back in uh, January 2020, and um, it was definitely a very uh, intense experience. Um, at the venue, they were probably about yay big out in the distance, mm-hmm. and then um, after that, I saw them again at uh, Red Rocks in Colorado, and uh, couldn't think of a more better venue in the atmosphere. I mean... Colorado enough said mm-hmm. and then most recently I saw them again in Chicago um, fortunately not in January where it was sub below freezing temperatures mm-hmm. um, the venue was pretty decent and um, I had a one of the first people to arrive at the venue which is a, a huge bonus and um, first in I'm, line yeah and um, I actually friends with um, some of the members uh, via Facebook, and uh, I had the privilege of uh, meeting up with a couple of them prior to the um, the performance. Oh, cool. And then a little bit afterwards, um, really got to uh, meet most, if not all, the uh, members of High Lung um, after, the, uh, after the show. Like, and like you hung out with them and stuff? Yes, hung out with them uh, at an after party. Oh. And that was very surreal, to say the very least. I mean, just being in the company of uh, such incredible people, and um, this is like meeting, you know, people you've always wanted to meet, and yeah. never imagined that to happen. So the uh, the experience. I mean, you've obviously been a fan for a while, and we've talked about just the whole. You know, it's it's more than just music. You know, it's more than just a concert. It's, yeah, it's, it's a ceremony. It's like a a ritual. And and everybody that I've talked to, everybody that you know. Uh, that you see on social media talking about it and talking about the experience exactly say the same thing like there there's almost unequivocally like it's an experience it's a ritual it's ceremonial and and Heilung really um, embraces that as well like it's not just what their fans and followers and, and and whatnot think like it's actually what the band pushes for it's not it's it's a ritual and they they, they call their 
they call their things rituals. You know, it's not come out to our concert, come out to our show. It's come to right. the ritual. Um, what's the what's the if you could I don't know maybe like summarize in in one word what it feels like to be at a Highland ritual. Healing, um, comforting, and um, yeah, that's mainly it. It's just being in a state of a ritual, a, um, a state of mind where you can, you know, commune with yourself and then the higher powers, be it, you know, the gods or whatever you choose to believe in. Yeah. Is it a pretty mixed crowd of, of I mean, you, know, you meet people and know people, like, you, they have a very strong, obvious you know, Germanic and, and Northern European aesthetic to, you know. It's a pretty general crowd. I mean, you have people who come dressed for the occasion, you know, in ritual garbs, or um, some people just walk around with this, uh, a regular band shirt, you know, one that says like, <laughs> Slayer or something like that. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, no, I mean, it's to each their own. You know, some people go for entertainment, and more so than not, most people go or, as you mentioned, an experience, and that's exactly what they offer. Mm. Yeah, I've, I've thought about going a number of times. Um, this is like, what, their third return visit to the States? I believe so. Something like that, yeah. which I'm glad for it because they obviously have a very dedicated following um, worldwide. Yep. But um, so I'm hoping that, you know, the next, the next go around, um, I'll try to make, make that. We definitely, we definitely it's been should. a busy year just for that type of music. I mean, I know Wardruna is, is coming here uh, next month, I think. Yeah, I'll be seeing them in uh, Chicago again. You're going up to see yeah, them? It's my first time seeing them, so I'm excited about that. I don't know, it's going to be interesting and like to compare because, uh, you know, it's kind of along the same lines of music, but a different, like Einar is, is uh, a much different energy vocalist and energy yeah. Yeah, just in the whole thing but uh very rooted in tradition very rooted in um you know the the, the healing nature of, of music and song and and, and whatnot and i think that's a lot of what you know people are needing nowadays is, is is ways to heal through varieties of of things challenges life events um you know last week when we when i talked about the uh uh letting things go right um how we, you know, the things that we find that we can use to help us let go, right? The things that kind of, I don't say fill a hole or fill a gap, but when you let go of something, you're losing something. You know, you're you're it's it's you're done with it now. So what do you do to replace that with? Do you fall into, you know, destructive habits, destructive behaviors? Do you, do you, or do you find things that are wholesome and healing? And I think stuff like you know, the music uh, is 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 definitely. A tool that can be leveraged for for that sort of thing what do you think oh i couldn't agree more i mean music has uh, always been a very big part of my life whether it be for um, inspiration for ritualistic practices or you know more often than not with other bands yeah. you know just entertainment yeah and now we're out here healing ourselves today with other people you know so community i think is, is, a, is a big part of healing as well absolutely um, and again you're, you know you can sit and listen to music by yourself but going to those events going to those rituals going to those ceremonies it takes it to a whole different level it i mean it's it. one thing you know seeing them on youtube via you know a video such as this yeah. but to be there in person it just it really amplifies it and that's something that you know that I've been willing to travel outside the state, be it Illinois or the lovely state of Colorado. Mm -hmm. And I'll jump at the chance of going there any chance I get. Yeah. Yeah, and that's like a, that's a ritual in and itself, I think too, like, or, or it's ceremonial in a way, cause you know, you're, you, you're taking, or, uh, you're taking yourself out of your comfort zone. You know, you're leaving a, a place that you're familiar with and you're going to some place new that you've never been or that is foreign to you. And, and you know, there's, there's always a level, I think, no matter, you know, I've traveled so much over my, over uh, the years, uh, but every place you go that's new, there, there's this, always this level of like, well, where do I go? What do I do? You know, there's, you know, maybe some anxiety. Yeah, the to, sense to of adventure degree. as well. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. It's like you can, you know, some people are terrified by that. You know, some people don't want to leave their, their own backyards. Um, and I feel like, you know, when you, when you, 
get stuck in that level of isolation from the world, you're, you're doing yourself an injustice. You're no, doing yourself a huge disservice. disservice. Yeah, exactly. You know? I mean, sometimes it, it really does pay off to go outside your realm of comfort more often than not that I had to find myself having to force myself to do, mm. you know, because um, it's like I suffer from depression and um, there are many times where I just want to sit in my room and just watch, you know, various different TV shows, but I will push myself to go outside, whether it be a park or around my neighborhood and Nine out of ten times, you know, I'm out doing that activity and I just find myself in a much more positive headspace. And this, mm -hmm. that's uh, very important in the state of mental health because if you're stuck alone in a room, you're not doing yourself much of a, a service. Yeah, you get caught yourself. You get caught inside yourself. Exactly right. And that's not always the best place to be. Yeah. Um, I think when we push ourselves outside of our comfort zones and I've you know when I used to go to like the gym all the time like there were plenty of times that I was like I don't feel like it I don't want to go I don't want to do it you know but I'd push myself to go do it and then feel great for doing no, it. No it really does pay off. You know you may not think like you're gonna be okay with it in the moment but when you actually go and push yourself past that threshold push, push, push yourself past that level of comfort you're gonna be glad you did. And you yeah. often find yourself you know seeking more adventures and more experiences, you know, to elevate that sense of uh, accomplishment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because it does. It sets a tone. And you know, like, huh, wow, the next time I don't feel like doing something, look what I have to look forward to. Exactly I can right. push myself because I've done it before, and now I know that in the, in the moment I may not enjoy it, but the experience I will, and then you'll, you'll learn something from it. Well, it's a lot like when I came to drive down here and the shenanigans that followed me. Mm, talk about know. that a bit. <laughs> yeah, that was, that's quite the story. So um, I started driving down here, and uh, at first, all was well. Weather was fine. My car at the time was okay. But then when I reached about, uh, I think it was like 150 miles away from here. Yeah, you were still a, a good ways, ways away. Ago, yeah, uh, my accelerator wasn't really working that well. So when you're driving down a highway originally 80 miles per hour or 75 and then it starts to go down to 60 and 55 and you're pushing the gas and nothing's working yeah <laughs> and a, then the sense of anxiety that flew through my or flooded through my veins was almost unbearable yeah but i still wasn't deterred and i still carried a hope and you know an effort to push on and see him not give up. You have to in those in cases. I mean, what are you gonna do? You can't just say, you well, you can't just give up. You can't just give up. I and mean, it's you're, really you're 150 miles away from me, but you're also however many hundreds of miles away from where you started. So exactly you're, it's right. like, I either, you, you gotta do something, man. If you it's can't important just, enough to you, you make it happen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and that's another thing too with like healing is that your Healing comes in a lot of different ways, and, and quite oftentimes it comes through the uh, challenges and adversities that we endure. Absolutely. We might think, oh man, I can't, I, can't, I can't deal with this anymore, or it's too tough. No, this is part of it. This is part of the experience. This is part of what we have to go through to, you know, I've, I've, I've uh, heard it said, and I, I definitely agree that adversity, ordeal, uh, it breeds worth. It's the thing that makes us worth while and, 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 and worthy and, and worth something among our, our, our communities, our, our friends, our families, right? If we haven't been pushed and we haven't been challenged and, and, and if life is just always so good and so cushy, right? Like, what are you worth? You haven't been tested. You haven't been, been tested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You haven't been put to the test. I like that. You haven't been tested. Um, with a lot of adversities, it's ultimately up to ourselves to let it make us or break us. And that's, you know, it's easier said than done. There will be days that your adversities will kick your ass. Mm -hmm. But then there are days that you'll find, you know, whatever battles and uh, victories you can, you know. Yeah. Not every day is going to be, you know, sunshine and gumdrops. Well, I think that's the that's the whole point. Is it you, you need to get we need to get our asses kicked sometimes. Yeah, it's a very it's a humbling experience, and you can't have the yeah. good without the bad. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to tell yeah. one from the other. Yeah, yeah. If like you say, if it's all just sunshine and gumdrops, you know, 
if we today, here's a classic example uh, of, of, of challenges or, adver or like a minor thing. What were you saying earlier about uh, if, if it's, uh, what's that phrase, that kind of a running joke that you were saying you have? Oh, it'd be too convenient. Too convenient, right? Yeah, so today, we can't have that. If yeah. it's too convenient. No. If, if, if Patrick didn't have any issues getting here, uh, then that would just be too That's convenient. That's too easy. Yeah, if, if, if we today didn't um, have issues with um, the place, because this, this spot here, this pavilion here is not the... Uh, not our first choice. Not the first choice. No. We, had, we were going to be at Barfield Crescent, and... Um, I'll be honest. I didn't. We didn't get up early enough, and I'll put that blame on me because I. I thought oh, we can get there about eight, eight thirty. Okay. Yeah. I got up at six. You. I'll see. So he was ready and ready. To I go didn't want to wake you up. Yeah, yeah. Don't be disturbed. So. Yeah. I said yeah, but that's my fault. You know, I should have actually gotten there much early. But we we tried a few different options over there, and you know, uh, got halfway unpacked, and they're like, hey, uh, in a nice way, like, um, you can't be here <laughs> because yeah, basically. they had uh, other things reserved. You know, they had other things going on. Something to do with vultures. Yeah, I believe I kind of so. wanted to stay for that. I'm like, that I want to see some vultures rather or interesting. whatever. If you got, like, actual vultures here. But, I mean, they're, they're all over the place anyway. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, so they had that going on. We had a, I had a, you know, think in our feet. And with places like this, you know, you never know what time of day when you show up. If it's, you know, a birthday party or, or a graduation or, I don't or know. Or a family a, gathering. Or a family get-together or, you know, somebody celebrating their, uh, you know, they they got peach fuzz on their nuts or something. I mean, who knows? <laughs> could be, you know, could be a bunch of things. But if they're here and they stake claim to that spot, then it's off limits. And that's what we ran into earlier. So I'm like, well, shit, you know, now what do we do? And now here we are. And this is actually probably a better setup than what we would have had at Barfield because I think if people show up today that we expect to show up, we're going to need more seats. Thankfully, we've got dozens of tables here and you know, in a couple hours when people start showing up, um, hopefully we don't run into any other hiccups in the road. But again, it's that challenge aspect. It's that to put you to the test. It's now you got a level think. of excitement as well. Yeah, it does. It, it adds like, a, oh boy, you know, a sense of adventure. Um, Is the Karen going to stop by and potentially call the cops? <laughs> or yeah. I doubt it'll be that. Nah, severe. I don't think so. But they might, you know. You never know, though. Well, this place is reserved. Show me where. Because we looked around. There's yes, no signs. You know, there's no signs here that say reserved for so and so on a certain date and so i'm like well if it ain't signed up and it's not showing it then i guess it's it's fair Free game, game. Yeah, yeah fair yeah, game exactly right you know but um but what else man we uh last week when i was talking about you know letting go um i don't have the audio for it for you guys to listen to here today but i got a call from a guy out in idaho um so crow uh from the deathlanders he's a gothi i think uh in a, at a, for a group out in the death, Deathlands of Idaho, as, as I recall. But he listens to the podcast. Um, so, Crow, if you're listening, thank you for your voicemail. I got it. Um, but the the whole that, that 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 topic of letting go really touched a lot of people. Like, I got a lot of comments on it on on different platforms. Um, you know, Crow called in. You obviously, I think you were listening to it yep. either on your train ride there or back to, to Chicago? Or Letting go, um, I was actually down at my lake. Yeah, that's right, yep. walking around the lake. And that's an interesting thing to, um, to mention because you had sent me a picture of a heron. And as a lot of people know from the content that I share, river walks are like my thing and, and have become a very regular activity. And um, a lot of times when I'm in the river, I'll be in the presence or, or see herons or a heron. And it's become kind of like a, a companion of sorts to me. And, um, you know, I've talked about the heron in depth with um, other people. Hold on. Got a phone call from my wife. Hello. Hey, recording the podcast. You want to be on it? I'll put you on speaker. <laughs> the heron. Yeah, the heron. Um, wife didn't want to be on the podcast, by the way. Uh, and she normally doesn't, but she called. She's on vacation. Talked to me for a little bit. Um, but anyway, the heron. Back to that uh, story. So being like that companion, being that... Um, guide. Yeah, like a, like, a, like a spirit guide in a way. Because 
my, my experiences with the heron, you know, it's like you're not going to get exceptionally close because they are wild animals and they're skittish, but getting so close to them when I can is like we're watching each other, we're observing each other, and I've had, you know, them fly over me in the river, they've perched in trees above and kind of just watch me do my thing. Um, and uh, the, uh, the, the, the ties that I have to, like, some of my Native American uh, heritage, which, believe it or not, I do. I don't look it per se, but I've got Algonquin, which I know is a pretty, like, generic term of, of the, those tribes of people. There's a lot of um, different tribes that, that fall under the Algonquin nation. Um, but they're, they're a lot of the, the Indian tribes that up in, like, the northeast are um, marsh, closest to, close to, close to marshes, saltwater marshes, freshwater marshes. And uh, so the heron is obviously a marsh water bird, and it, it feels like to me, you know, and, and maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but for me it feels like it's a, uh, an ancestor on that side. Um, and so I've perceived the heron to be a sort of familiar or filia or fetch. When you sent that picture of the heron, I'm getting, and that's what I was getting to, is when you sent that picture of the heron, um, you encountered that creature after I had gone to the river myself. Like I had gone to the river earlier that day, um, and you were then inspired to go out to the lake, yep. and you were listening to the podcast, and the, when you went out to the lake, that was, it was like the day before. Yep, day before my departure. Be before yep. you left. It was Thursday. Yep. And I looked at that, and I don't know if I told you this, um, but I looked at that and I perceived that as subconsciously, like I had no intention of going to the river and doing this, but s without me even trying to, the, the energy, the, 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 the purpose, going to the river, the intent, everything, just the intention of it all, moved that spirit to you. And the, the guide, that my philia, came to you without me trying to. And you saw the heron, and to you at the moment it was the heron, but to me I see that as like a sign for you to know that you, you're going to go and your trip's going to be prosperous. Yep. It's going to be a good trip. And with the challenges that, that came along the way, so far it has been. Yep, that you has. Know, like he got here yesterday, because we're recording now, it's a Saturday. He got here yesterday afternoon. Um, Originally he was supposed to get here at like, 155 and then I had to stop the car several times to let it cool off yeah. and throw its little temper tantrum. Yeah. And then um then there was the issue with my battery. I didn't even mention that. Yeah. Your your phone battery. I made the mistake of listening to music um via my phone on YouTube and played that for about 4 hours. Mm -hmm. And I realized drained very it. quickly, yeah, <laughs> I drained it very quickly and um I was probably about 10% battery when I was driving to your house, and I was scared to death that, you know, I'm also relying on GPS here for my phone, yeah. so if that goes, it's just, I'm SO, SOL. Yeah, and I was even telling him, I'm like, maybe stop somewhere and get a uh, car charger, you know, like a lot of gas stations will have them that'll fit the phone, but um, I was like, well, even if you're, if, if you, as long as you get on X Y Z road, like as long as you get on that road, I'll be out here waiting for you. And I was, I was like, in case the phone died and you couldn't call me, I'm like, I'll be right out here. You'll see me. And uh, for sh you know, sure enough, he did. Got here. We, um, you know, got you settled in. Went down to the river later that night. Got ate up by a bunch of mosquitoes because it's, you know, that time of year. And we're gonna go back to the river. We're gonna go back to the river uh, tomorrow uh, during the day and probably get in the water and do some river walking and see what we can see and some grounding yep and i'll be bringing bug spray at this time yep once you get in the water believe it or not the the bugs like there'll be bugs around like dragonflies and stuff that fly over the water of course. but i've never had any ma major issues with bugs should have brought some bug spray today actually that would have been a little too convenient though a little bit took here we go again right it would have been too i'm telling convenient. you it's everywhere you go it'll happen at any point you just gotta roll the punches you do and uh We've definitely had some punches to roll with, but nothing too, like, earth-shattering, nothing too, no. you know. Very minor, for yeah. the most part. But again, it, it's those things that you just constantly need to be reminded of, that it's if it's too easy and you, and you get too complacent, you know. It's we've not had worth having. Exactly. You don't remember those moments. No. They don't stick in your mind as, as, as an important mark in the road, an important milestone. 
we've had this happen too with our tribe before where you know we were going to cut up firewood for an event i forget what, what, which uh might have been like cigar bloat or something i don't know we were cutting up firewood and we thought we'll, we'll go out here we'll make short work of this that way we can have more time to like party or drink or do whatever we want to do before the before the ceremony we were going to bring a chainsaw out there to cut all the wood up chainsaw wouldn't start of course tried Probably. every which way you know check the gas check the filters did this clean it out spent like 20 minutes trying to get that stupid thing to start and it wouldn't so it was back to axes and saws and then you know we were out there just busting our butts for hours cutting up firewood but again we were able to enjoy the fire and so much more because we are reaping the benefits of, of, of the work that we put in, you know, the sweat, the exertion of energy, you know, all of that stuff being, that would have, that you wouldn't have thought, sure, yeah, cutting things up with chainsaws aren't easy, but when you're talking about, you know, fire for all night, like, you gotta cut a lot of wood, and man, when you're, when you're swinging an ax for hours, or sawing with a handsaw for hours, like, you're worn out by the end of it, and all you wanna do is just sit down and relax. It's also a very humbling experience when you mm -hmm. see firsthand just what our ancestors had to go through. Yes. Like yesterday when I was driving down here, I mean, obviously they didn't have cars. They didn't have maps. They didn't have anything. I mean, they had the, the stars and the sun, and mm -hmm. that was pretty much it. And it made me really appreciate the uh, amenities and technology that we have today to make this a lot more uh, easy to accomplish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good, uh, like, paying homage to our ancestors by doing the things that, you know... We take for granted. We take for granted, yeah. And I've, you know, heard a lot of people uh, make mention of, you know, how what have you done to earn your life? What have you done to earn your next meal? Because we are, we live in a time now where if I'm hungry, I just get in my car and go through the drive through exactly. Or I can go to the grocery store and pick up ingredients to cook. There's still people nowadays, modern, modern day primitive tribes that, if they're hungry, they gotta go catch. Oh, something. hunter gatherers, they gotta yeah. Hunt, they gotta hunt. They gotta fish. They gotta harvest it from the ground. They gotta go get it. And most people nowadays don't understand that struggle. No. They don't understand that to, in order to eat, you have to work. So, I think it's an important message for people now to, you'll have a much better quality of life. You'll feel so much better if you put in the work to obtain what it is that you want, right? If I'm hungry, if I wanna eat, okay, well, what have I done to earn it? I just woke up today, so what? What have I done? I don't, you know, lift Get out my heavy. debit card, ooh. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you know, but I mean, like, put in some physical, put in some effort, you know what I mean? Go out for a walk, go do some push-ups, I don't know. Um, so, something that you can simulate as the struggle Working and the plight. Yeah. yeah, exactly. The it could be a very enriching experience, I would imagine, too, for all those people who hunt for their food, for example, like oh, yeah. deer or elk or what have you. Yeah. I mean, shoot. Um, have you ever gone hunting? No, I would like to someday. Yeah. Provide a Nowadays, it's a little bit, I think, different, but um, like I've hunted deer, I've hunted turkeys. Um, of course, I've gone fishing. You ever fished? You ever gone? Of course. Fishing? I'm yeah. not a savage. I, I, <laughs> I had a pretty decent upbringing, and fishing was definitely a part of that. Not crazy about it. I mean, I'll do it with a couple beers, maybe. Yeah. Really, uh. Throw a case of beer in the boat. And I'm not fish. a very patient person either, so <laughs> you yeah. can ask any of my friends. They'll be like, oh, yeah, 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 he can't wait for shit. But, um. Yeah, that's the, that's the other thing, too, is like when you're hunting or fishing or any sort of game you know activity like that you you have to have patience because a deer is not just going to walk across your path a turkey is not just going to land yeah. in your lap a fish isn't going to jump in your boat or in your net like you gotta wait it out you gotta first of all look for the signs right you don't just you're not going to throw a fishing line into a swimming pool because obviously that's not where the fish are at you no. need to know where to go for the thing that you're trying to get you need to read the signs of nature around you to know that what you're going after is, is accessible and, and available to you there. So again, it's it's a whole thing, man. It's a whole mood. It's a it's a whole ceremony in itself. And then when you do, um, you know, capture your, your your prey when you when you 
killed your deer or turkey or you caught your fish it is it's it's so enriching and it's so rewarding that you know the time that you spent waiting for them or the effort that you took tracking them or you know reading the signs of nature around you to know i need to cast my line under that tree not in the middle of that rock or something you know what i mean like it is it's uh, it's 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 a great way to connect to your primal roots you know that's another part of healing it that you're not counting on that to survive yeah. for you know your day-to-day meal yeah can you imagine how people would, would be now there it, man nowadays i think there'd be so many people that would absolutely just <coughs> croak if they oh, had absolutely. to go back to, Within to weeks. no electricity no running water no wi-fi no, no internet you know if you want to go anywhere you got to walk or, or or get on an animal that'll carry you <laughs> you Provided know that they let you yeah it's 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 a man I had like I grew up kind of in a in a similar type city. I would I would maybe say it wasn't like primitive modern day modern day primitive tribe living, but it was kind of like almost like a like Amish in a way. You know, like yeah, we had running water, we had electricity, but um, you know, we had we raised uh, cattle for beef. We had everybody had gardens. We would uh, you know, and the and the farm that you know raised the, that the beef cattle were raised on, the steers were raised on. You know, we cut those fields. You know, we we cut the hay. We um, muck those stalls. We did all those things. We fixed the fences. Nobody else did it. We did it ourselves. You know, so it's definitely a, an enriching experience. And I think I think more people nowadays that that haven't had that type of lifestyle or, or were raised that and that sort of lifestyle are are definitely missing out. Um, so if you have that opportunity take advantage of it maybe put yourself in that position and it doesn't necessarily have to be like an everyday thing but i said you know what have you done today to earn what you've got the con- the, the, com- the you know the modern day conveniences and th- that makes our lives so so enjoyable because we really do we have it easy we have it very easy and if we're not doing things i think to honor our ancestors legacies you know and not feeding that well um then it's you know, we're doing our ancestors a disservice also. And I like to point out that it's not a point to make yourself suffer. I mean, that might be part of the process, but it's mm-hmm. to develop that sense of um, appreciation and awareness that what's most often taken for granted. Yeah. Now, that's an interesting point that you say, making yourself, su- making yourself suffer or making ourselves um, suffer. We're, we suffer in life anyway. Life is full of suffering. Are we going to be victim of the suffering, or are we going to put ourselves through ordeals and put ourselves through challenges that are going to condition us to deal with that suffering better? You know, so again, I could say, you know, I don't, I don't feel like going out to, you know, the river today. I don't feel like going on a walk today because I feel bummed out about, you know, life my or job whatever, my or job, or, you know, whatever things that are real and that you know you have to. Or I could say, you know, I, I need to go out and I need to do this because it's it's healing. It's 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 that time that you put yourself through that challenge, put yourself through that ordeal, and come out stronger in the end. The suffering that you're going through, whether it's you know physical suffering, mental suffering, spiritual suffering, you know, if you if you're spiritually lacking, if you're you know feeling disconnected from your spiritual path or religious path right um putting yourself through these things can really light a fire up under you and here comes a plane and a lot more people yeah you might not see it but we have about it's 15 a great, plus people swarming us right now it's a it's a busy it's a busy day at the park which is uh, great i mean it's a nice day out and of course can't really fault them for that people but are out here enjoying it and that's what we like to see we like to see people enjoying themselves in the outdoors and not just being tied to a TV or, or an app or a phone, you know, so, but yeah, man, um, that's a pretty, I think that's a wrap. What do you think? Anything else that we missed? Well, I mean, I was also going to point out, um, the practices of, uh, reciprocation oh, yeah. as well as intentions, whether that, and that can go for spiritual practices, relationships with ourselves, with our gods and our family and that's and even with the for example like the groups that we follow for example for one example um, Heilung for 
for that reason, um, Faith is someone that I've uh, looked up to and have helped me through some very difficult times, even to this very day. Mm-hmm. And to really, I really invested myself and shared my appreciation and um, joy for what they do and what they sacrifice. I mean, I can't imagine the time they take away from their own families and their friends to come over here to the States mm. and travel all across the country. I mean, financially, it seems very daunting as well. But um, that's something that they're willing to sacrifice to provide the healing and, you know, experiences that they offer. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they have a life, right? And that this is like as much of as much of a ritual experience as it is and a ceremonial thing for it to be a, to be a part of it is it's their livelihood you know it's like they could be doing anything to earn a living right this is what they've chosen to do this is what they've embarked on to do and they you know th- those you know uh, commodities and stuff that they get to enjoy are by giving back to people yeah and that First me too, you know, when I got to meet them in person, this is, it was a very humbling and very joyous occasion to have really experienced that point of reciprocation to know that they appreciate me as much as I appreciate them. And that's something I never imagined would have ever happened. I know they appreciate everybody as a fan base mm-hmm. and a following, but on a very individual level, it just, like I said, transcended all expectations that I never even knew I had. Yeah. But that also, you know, like I mentioned um, a few moments ago, is whenever you're practicing, whether it be, you know, the heathen path or pagan path, when you make an offering or, you know, you feel lacking in something, it's just all based on your intentions, you know, like putting your heart and soul into what you are trying to obtain or what you're trying to experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's, you know, I think that's just good life advice <laughs> you know sure we look at things and from a very you know you know patrick's pagan and so am i and you know this obviously this podcast is is focused on heathen related topics and, and things of a heathen nature but you could really put you could put this on anything oh any you practices put, yeah yeah anything even if you don't have a specific spiritual path or religious path you, if you're just i mean it's good life advice yeah relationships with our families with our you know, loved ones and yeah. even our careers, but most importantly, ourselves. Because, you know, what we put in is what we get out. And that's that, true. that can come down to, you know, what your, what your diet is yep. or what activities you do. I mean, it's a very important thing and something I often neglect is I find myself thinking, man, I really need to take better care of myself. You know, whether that means, you know, cutting back the amount of beer that I drink or the amount of cannabis I ingest. Mm-hmm. And it's just to show that sense of love to myself like you know what I want to feel better I want to do better and that's something that I think you know is back based to intentions and yeah. you know that level of commitment that it takes to uh, to do something like that and you'll be of you'll be a better use and you'll be of better worth to your community to your people when you take better care of yourself when we take better care of ourselves because then we're not going to you know be struggling through phys- physically demanding activities when when it's required you know, because that's so much of what I think we have lost with community itself is, you know, everybody's, everybody says that they're available. Oh, if you need anything, just hit me up, right? Right. They don't really, like, because when you do hit them up, and then where are they? I'm kind of busy right now. Yeah, yeah, like. But there are, out, there are those out there that do stand true to their, you know, their offer. And yeah. Those people. Yeah, it's not everybody, you know. No. You know not everybody's, like, just going to blow you off. But how out of the percentage of people that say if you ever need anything just hit me up and then you ask them for something like what do they do oh, i can't uh, i'm not gonna or they don't they, they just ghost you you know mm. stuff like that so again taking care of ourselves makes us of, of better worth so that way when people are in need you can rightly and, and confidently be available and, and then live up to it a position of experience as well mm-hmm. you know to practice what you preach and to be you know a living example and you know yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. So do it, man. Like, get out there and, and be a living example. It doesn't doesn't have to be heathen. Doesn't have to be pagan. But it definitely fits this model. You know, like we, we, it fits. It, it checks all of the boxes, right? 
So for everybody that's listening, watching, thank you so much. Thank you, Patrick, for being here today with me. And thank you for, you know, going on in this adventure with me today. You, you, you see firsthand just how the best made plan sometimes. And if you're not, if you're not being on top of your game, how the, you know, the, the challenges, the, the, the things that come up that put you to a test, you were here for it. And yep. we, we, went, we got through it together. And uh, we'll see how the rest of the day goes, but hopefully we're here and have a great time with people. And Should be very interesting. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure I'll I'm be talking excited. about it next week, too. Uh, <laughs> just kind of give a recap of it. So, yeah, more to come on all that. But, yeah, for everybody that's going in, listening, watching, thank you for your support. Uh, don't forget to check the link, tree, link in uh, the description or show notes of this podcast for all the ways that you can support Midgard Musings and, and the, the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. So until we see you all again, may the gods continue to notice you. May your ancestors smile upon you.